What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you today's video, and we are talking about a new base building technique that I've really been liking lately. It is using this multi-inferno tower on the exterior, that outer layer of your base. We're gonna talk about why it actually can be a good idea in a lot of bases, why I recommend it, how to use it, and the different benefits and places to use it. This applies to town hall, any town hall level where you have the inferno tower but especially town hall 12 and 13 where you have three inferno towers plus the town hall um, meaning the inferno tower itself is not as important of a building relative to all the other defensive power that you have it frees you up to do this with an inferno tower um, so we're looking at this base as an example today guys if you want your own custom war bases sent to you each month Check out my Patreon, I'll give some more information towards the end of this video, um, but that's a way you can get your own bases sent to you uh, for a very small donation price. Now that being said, let's take a look at how this is set up, we'll take a look at a replay and get into the details of this. There's uh, definitely a couple advantages to using this, and what it does is it makes it more difficult for a big push through the core to neutralize all your important defenses. Um, by having your Inferno Tower on the outside of the base, it's going to make it difficult for a push through the base from the other side, perhaps, or even, you know, an adjacent side. When the troops are in the core like this, they're going to have a lot of difficulty getting over and reaching uh, that Inferno Tower, and it's going to be difficult on the back end to be dealt with. Um, it also blocks a Queen Charge. Um, you can't start your healers right in the range of the Inferno Tower. And you can see there's some things around it. We'll talk about why we're putting these specific buildings near it as well. Um, but in short, it's gonna block queen charges. It's also going to bait a Sui hero or a walk that kind of comes by and takes it out. So you can kind of choose what you wanna bait uh, the attacker to do, then set up traps to defend against that. You're gonna limit the siege barracks value because you can't really put a siege barracks there. All the wizards will get killed really easily. Um, also other deployments like balloons, baby dragons, wizards on the outside. It limits all those little troop operations from the, on the outside of the base from happening in the domain of that inferno tower. Um, and finally the attacker's not used to it. It's a new thing and that's what works best at base building. Um, so you'll see what we have around it. This is important. You need at least one defensive hero. Otherwise, uh, at Town Hall 13 especially, the attacker can use their royal champion to take it out really easily. Um, they can use another hero like their queen to take it out. So you gotta make sure it's well protected, which is why I put both my royal champion and my barbarian king on this base to defend uh, that inferno tower, but you wanna have at least one hero near it. Um, an air defense is helpful to kill like a stone slammer or something like that perhaps. Notice I also have my CC for some added uh, defensive power in that area. That's also important. Um, not necessarily necessary, but it's good to have to help protect that Inferno Tower and really make it difficult for Sui heroes or um, a cheap trade there. Because the attacker, instinctively when they see that, they're going to either think, can I queen charge this? Or even more likely, can I use Sui heroes, drop my queen here, take it out, and then maybe do like a drag bat on the base or something now that that's down. So make sure that's difficult to do. Make them invest a lot to get that done. And we had the Teslas there as well for added damage, as well as a Seeking Air Mine, Spring Trap in case they Yeti Bomb it. But people are not going to Yeti Bomb because that's another big point that I didn't even mention earlier, is the Yeti Bomb is important for uh, making, uh, cutting out a piece of the base and making pathing easier. So if, on the, if it's on the outside of the base, they're not going to really see a whole lot of value in using the Yeti Bomb to take out this outer compartment because they're not really taking out a big section of your base and narrowing it down for a hybrid or some other type of push through the base. Um, so it's not just defensive value, it's where the defensive value is, and by putting it here, you're not giving up a lot of position, uh, which is important. If it was deep in the base, then they would be much more valuable. But at the same time, we don't have you know a lot of other high value buildings like scatter shots, expos nearby um, because we don't wanna give too much value. And also it's freeing up, look at this back end of the base we have uh, air defenses, single infernos, bunch of expos, scatter shots, kind of in the area almost, although they're more central. But it's freeing up a lot of firepower for the other side of the base. So just the investment of, you know, CC, defensive hero, didn't even need the other one, but it's helpful to have. Plus the inferno and a couple of Teslas, you're freeing up a lot of anti-queen charge stuff on the back end of the base. 
uh, which is a, a good trade-off because it's, it's difficult to cover your entire base from a queen charge. Um, so I think that covered pretty much everything uh, I wanted to talk about. You want to do this typically with one Inferno Tower, although it could be done with two, and I'm experimenting with that at Town Hall 13, um, covering two parts of a base, and you can put it in the corner as well, or on the side. The benefit of the corner is it really makes it difficult to do any type of queen charge, because queen charges can't, or queen walk rather, queen walks can't round a corner very easily, um, so by putting it in the corner it's going to be even more difficult to do a queen walk through it. Um, so let's take a look at a replay before I talk any more and give you guys kind of an idea of what I'm talking about in actual uh, motion setting. Go ahead and hop into our war log here and check out this war. Unfortunately, it's a Town Hall 12 attacking it, so, you know, take it with a, a big grain of salt in terms of uh, it not being, probably having a chance of 3-starring. But you can kind of see how the pathing works because, like I said, a lot of people are going to try to queen charge these, or queen walk them rather. And the distinction I make is a queen walk kind of walks past it, a queen charge charges through it and goes deep into the base with the queen. This is a queen walk, which they'll try to do against this. Um, like I said earlier, you can't start a charge going directly into it because if you drop the healers, they'll get picked off by the inferno right away before the queen can take it out. And that's why part of the reason you want those defensive heroes, part of the reason you want the air defense to even take out those heroes even quicker. So the only way they can take it out with a queen walk slash charge, any type of thing like that, is to start the queen a little distance away then have her walk over. Now that's kind of what's being baited on this base because I'm countering with like three or four seeking air mines in this area um, for when the walk does come this way. I mean, they're not gonna start the walk over here. It's too difficult because there's a gap in the wall. The queen might not even go for the inferno. So the obvious place to start the walk is up there, which is what they do. Um, and I could have even been more proactive in defending this with more seeking air mines. They're not really dropping a whole lot of test loons. So uh, that could have been done for sure. But the important thing here is I'm expecting this and that's why the base has a lot of buildings on this uh, side to make it difficult to funnel into the core because they want to do that yeti smash it's going to be difficult the one thing that is a little bit of a weakness of this base is you can see had they used the e-dragon correctly which uh, the attacker really won't they can use it to take out these buildings perhaps and create that funnel pretty nicely to go into the core which might have a chance of working but um, the funnel with just a siege barracks is not nearly enough. Everything's going to walk around, which is the intent of this base. Um, there's a very small window where that jump spell is for the troops to actually go in. And there's a pretty big, you know, three tile gap between the bomb tower and the uh, scatter shot. So troops really aren't inclined to go into the base unless they're really forced to. And that's uh, not going to be the case for the vast majority of the uh, troop space that you see on the screen right now. Um, so everything walks around. This, th this will kind of wrap up here. Uh, definitely, you know, have the eagle far away from whatever nonsense you got going on with the multi-inferno and the town hall, because um, people are going to try to exploit that side, so it's helpful to keep the eagle on the other side. But um, I really am a big fan of this base, guys. If you want to copy it, you can use the quick build link in the description below. I will link it, um, and you can try it out. It might not be the best base. The, I'm showing it on YouTube because it's not the best base I have. Um, but it shows this concept pretty nicely, and I think it's a good starting point if you're doing your own builds um, or if you're interested in base building. So I will open it up one more time to show you guys, um, but I think I made all the points I want to make. Uh, like I said, just you know, be aware of people trying to queen walk it, use Sui heroes. Um, that's what you're baiting. That's the reason you're putting it there. Um, so try it out. One or two Infernos, it really can throw people off. And, you know, it would pair as well having the town hall area open and nearby. Um, so just kind of take in what's being done in this space and use your own thoughts if you're a builder. Um, I did mention my Patreon earlier, so just to hop back to that. If you are interested, you can see some details on the right of the screen already. Um, my Patreon offers various services. The bases, as one of them, you can get one or two custom war bases every month uh, built to your needs for any town hall level. Um, as well as perks below that, um, access to the Discord server where you can get attacking advice for any uh, screenshot you post of a base you have to attack. You can get a couple experts to give you advice uh, within a couple hours usually and uh, be more successful in your crucial attacks, uh, post your own bases, get feedback on them, and see bases of other people who post old bases, stuff like that. So there's a lot of perks to my Patreon one to give it a shout out. Um, so you guys are aware it's there. If it's something you're interested in, the link is always 
in the description of this video. Um, and also linked is this base if you just want to try this out as well. No charge. <laughs> so anyway, that'll do uh, it for this video. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys next time. Bisectatron out.